Now instead of typing in the function module name, I'm just going to put part of the name in and use wildcard characters to do a search for the function module, just to help demonstrate really how many function modules there are and how you would go about searching out function modules yourself. So what I'm going to do is key in an asterisk and then key in the word amount, followed by another asterisk and then press F4. Now this is showing me in this system, I do have some filters set, but there are 12 results that have come back. And what I specifically want to show here is we get the function module, which is in blue, but then we get the function group, which is above it. And we can see there are various function modules within our search that belong to the same function group. So let's say we, we don't know the exact function module we want, but we like the look of, say, these here. There's four here that are in this ISOC group. Now, maybe there are more function modules in this group, but just don't have the word amount in them. So what we can do is close this window and we'll go to transaction SE80. Now, SE80, I've mentioned before, is the object navigator. And you'll find that you will use SE80 a lot more than SE38. But we've been using SE38 just to keep focused on ABAP programming itself. SE80 lets you do the ABAP programming, you know, the ABAP editor, but it also lets you go into function modules and all other development objects within an SAP system. So by coming to this drop down, you can see that we can look at all sorts of objects. We can bring up programs. And if I double click, we'll see the program over here. Packages, function groups, all sorts of things, classes and interfaces when you get onto ABAP objects, business server pages, and so on. And depending how you have this figured, that will determine what comes up in your dropdown. So I want to go back to function groups. And we're going to key in ISOC, which was the function group of those four function modules that had the word amount in there that we just previously looked at. So I'll key it in, press enter, and then you see the various objects that belong to this function group. And the one we're interested in is function modules. And as you can see, these are the four function modules that turned up in our search. But in actual fact, there are a whole bunch of function modules that belong to this function group that may be of some interest. And all we need to do to have a look to see if these are what we want is double click and we will get to see the code on the right hand side. And just like any normal program, we can test out the function module. Now I'm going to close this window and come back to our previous session. Now the one we're going to work with is actually called spell amount. It's a very simple function module, but it includes everything we want to see when trying to work out how function modules work. So we'll select spell amount and then choose display. And what I'm going to do now is go along each of these tabs and explain what they mean and what's inside and how we use them with function modules. So first of all, we have the function module attributes. Here you can see we have the function group that this function module belongs to, and we have some text to describe the function module and group. And we have various options further down. Processing type defines the actual type of function module. This one is defined as normal, but we can have remote enabled, which means it can get triggered from an external system. And then the update module, you can see this is set to start immediate and we have some various other options such as start delayed and then just basic information about when the function module was created. Let's move on to the import tab. Now this lists the individual fields we will use as our data interface for data we pass into the function module. 
So if we look at this from a function module perspective, it's going to be importing information that it can use during the processing of its code. And in this case, we've got four fields, an amount, a currency, a filler, and a language. And we have some text on the right hand side that gives some information about what the actual field is. We have a couple of checkboxes. Make them wide enough. The first one is optional. That means with this function module, all of the fields that get imported, they're all optional fields. We don't have to fill them in when we call this function module from our program. More often than not, you will get some mandatory fields, but this one, every field is optional. And then we have pass by value, which means it's going to pass the actual value into the function module. Let's move on to the export tab. Now, once the function module does its work, the fields defined in the export tab are what gets sent back to our calling program. So again, from a function module perspective, it exports this information out to whoever called it. Then we have a changing tab. And as you might guess, this just lists fields that would be changed by the function module. That is, we can identify fields that we send into the function module. The function module may then change the values and these fields are then returned back to our calling program. So where the fields on the import tab, the function module only receives in, the export, the function module only sends them back out to whoever called. The changing, it receives data in, changes it, and then sends it back out. So it's a combination of the two, really. Then we have tables. And just like when we looked at subroutines, we're not restricted to just passing in individual fields. We can pass in internal tables as well. And this is where internal tables would be set up. Now the exceptions tab. Every function module has the ability to pass back exception information to indicate if the function module was executed successfully or not. And we're not just limited to finding out if it was successful, but we can also determine specific error messages. So we could have a whole list of exceptions here. And as you can see with this function module, we have not found, we have too large, and we could have a whole host of other messages that get passed back to our program to help us determine why the function module didn't execute as we wanted it to. These exceptions are not fixed. Every function module defines its own exceptions. It's just like passing messages back to the calling program just to indicate if it worked or not, and if it didn't, why didn't it work? So that the calling program can then use its own logic to determine what it should do next. Now the last tab is the source code itself. So this is where a programmer creates the ABAP app that processes the data that was passed in, it sends data back out through the export. It can change variables and also update internal tables and then report any exceptions. So just by looking at this code, you can see some comments here. It's showing you the fields it's importing, the fields that it will export, in this case, just one, and any exceptions. programmer in this case starts out with a describe field statement and we've got an if statement and we can just continue down to have a look at the code and try and determine what it does. Now the beauty about function modules that have already been created is we don't need to know what the code's doing because hopefully we know what this function module should return to us and in this case this specific function module what it does, it turns a numeric value into words. So let's say you had to send out printed checks. Well, maybe your program could call this passing in a numeric value. This would return the value spelled out in words, and then you could output that on the checks. 